Hi, I'm Miss Kristen of the Oosterhout Free Library, and I love crayons. There's so many different colors to choose from and so many different things you can create with crayons. That's why I thought it was so cool that this past Wednesday was National Crayon Day. Yep, a day to celebrate crayons. Now, April is also National Humor Month, so I'm going to start today off with a joke. Here's my joke. See if you know what the answer might be. What is a cat's favorite color crayon? Do you know what it is? Well, the answer's written right there. What? You can't see it. Well, that's because it's hidden right before your eyes. And today I'm going to show you how you can make your own hidden messages using crayons and the science behind this cool trick. But first, did you know that Crayola crayons like these? began right here in Pennsylvania. That's right. Well, I have a story about it to share with you called The Crayon Man. So let's get started with that. The Crayon Man, the true story of the invention of Crayola crayons, written by Natasha Bebo, illustrated by Stephen Salerno, published by HMH Books for Young Readers. Once there was a man who saw color everywhere. He noticed the yellow-orange petals of the black-eyed Susan in his garden. He marveled at the rich scarlet-red tones of the cardinal's feathers. He admired the deep blue-greens of the waves on the sea. Color made him really, really happy. But all day long at work, all he saw was black. Black dust, black tar, black smoke, black ink, black dye, black shoe polish. His name was Edwin Binney, and he was an inventor. He worked with his cousin, C. Harold Smith, Together, they were Binny and Smith. Edwin invented a new kind of inexpensive slate pencil that wrote very smoothly. It was gray, and children loved it. He invented a kind of chalk that wasn't dusty and didn't crumble. It was white. Teachers loved it. He invented a wax crayon that would write on wood and paper packaging. It was really, really black, and people loved it. So when everyone, including Edwin's wife, Alice, told him that children needed better, cheaper crayons, he listened. They said, the crayons we have are big, dull, and clumsy. The lumps of colored clay only make fat, chunky lines. And the artist crayons from Europe are far too expensive. They crumble and break easily, and some are even poisonous. Edwin thought about his company's inventions. When you drew a picture with their gray slate pencil, it rubbed off at the drop of a hat. When you drew a picture with their white chalk, it smudged everywhere. If you drew a picture with Edwin's new really black crayon, it was, well, well, really black. Hmm. Aha. So, Edwin listened, and Edwin invented. In a small stone mill in Pennsylvania, in a top-secret lab, Edwin's team experimented. How could they make better, stronger crayons? Melted paraffin wax? Perhaps. Now for the crayon colors. Grinding, grinding, grinding up rocks and minerals into fine powders. Mixing, mixing, slate for gray, earth for yellow, red and brown, hmm, perhaps. Oh yes, and lapis for blue. Pounding, sifting, and heating the colored powders. Would they be bright enough? 
Edwin's team kept on trying. They kept on experimenting. They came home covered in color. They experimented some more and discovered a pinch of this pigment, a sploosh of that one, a little hotter and a little cooler, and voila, lots of different shades. Now there were greens and oranges and violets and pinks too. Edmund came home covered in color. In a large tub at the mill, Edwin's team measured out the ingredients. Melted wax, clay to thicken, something for texture, colored powders, each in just the right amount every time to make a top secret formula. Slowly, carefully, stirring by hand, they poured the special formula into thin crayon-shaped molds, smaller than any other inventors, just the right size for children's hands. The mixture cooled and hardened. Edwin watched, and Edwin waited. Finally, one summer evening in June 1903, Edwin came home covered in color and announced that he'd invented a new kind of colored crayon. But what should he call it? Alice, his wife, had an idea. She said, let's mix the French word cray for stick of chalk and the word ola from the word oleaginous, meaning oily like the oily texture of the crayon wax to invent a new word, Crayola, and Edwin listened. Benny and Smith shipped out the first Crayola crayon boxes, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black, eight colored crayons for only a nickel. Edwin waited. Would children like them? Children did. Now they could draw a tiny green caterpillar or the big blue sky. Their drawings wouldn't smudge and they wouldn't rub out. They were bright and could last a long, long time. Excitement over the new colorful invention spread like wildfire. Admirers far and wide flocked to marvel at Binney's and Smith's invention at the St. Louis World's Fair. The company's dustless chalk even won a gold medal. Proudly, Edwin and Harold showed it off, especially in their new Crayola crayon boxes. Every day, Edwin brought colorful bouquets from his garden to inspire the Crayola team. They made crayons in even more different shades, and later asked children to help name some of them. To celebrate their 90th anniversary, Crayola held a color naming competition. The six-year-old winner coined the Tropical Rainforest Color. Other color names created by children included Robin's Egg Blue, Tickle Me Pink, and Macaroni and Cheese. At last, because of Edwin Binney, the man who saw color everywhere, who had a knack for listening and making what people needed, children all around the world could reach for just the right shade to draw anything. The end. How Crayola crayons are made today. In 1903, Crayola crayons are made carefully in small lots by hand. Today, machines produce 12 million crayons a day. Train cars deliver paraffin wax to the Crayola factory in Easton, Pennsylvania. The wax is heated and melted and stored in tall silos. Workers pour colored powders, called pigments, into vats filled with a liquid wax. They add clay to thicken it and then mix it. 
The mixture is pumped into crayon shaped molds. The crayons are pushed up from the mold and a robotic arm then moves them to a labeling machine. Workers check the finished crayons and store them in large cardboard cartons, one for each color. The workers put the crayons into a machine. A robotic arm pushes the crayons into each box and closes it. The crayons are now ready to be sent to a store near you. That was pretty cool to learn that Benny and Smith created Crayola crayons right here in Pennsylvania back in 1903 and they're still making crayons in Pennsylvania today. Now, do you have a favorite color crayon? And more importantly, do you know the answer to the joke that I shared with you earlier? What is a cat's favorite color crayon? Now, I wasn't joking. The answer really is there, even though it might be hidden and you can't see it. Well, I'm gonna show you how to reveal it. And all you need is a marker. I'm going to go ahead and rub it right on the paper. Oh, I see it coming out. And there's the answer. What is the cat's favorite color crayon? Purple. Get it? <laughs> Purple like a cat? I know it's kind of silly. I like silly jokes. But you can create secret messages at home. But how does that trick work? So how did that work and what is the science behind it? To answer that, you have to know what a crayon is made out of. And if you remember in the story, it mentioned that crayons are made out of wax, which gives the crayon its shape and its strength. Wax also helps the crayon markings stick to the paper and not rub off. See, it's not coming off and will be there for a long time. A crayon also has a pigment which gives the crayon its color. Now I wrote my answer to the joke in white crayon, which pigment or color is the same color as the paper. So you can't see it even though it's right there until you rub the marker over it. Now, the marker that you use to reveal the answer is water-based. This is where the science is. Wax is a lipid or oily. In fact, Crayola it was named for Ola for oil. And maybe you might have some cooking oil like this at home. Have you ever mixed it with water? Does it mix well together? Or does it look kind of like this? That's right, oil and water do not mix well together. You could try it for yourself at home. But to make a secret message, all you need is some white paper, a white crayon, write your message on it. You might want to press nice and hard to make your, your line really thick. And then you need something that is a liquid base to go over it. So you can't really see what I wrote right there, but until I get this marker, which is liquid base, and scribble right over it. And there's my message. Hi. <laughs> so you could try doing that at home. You can make uh, jokes, perhaps, or maybe you can make a, a hidden picture for your family. You could create all types of secret messages at home. And all you need is that white crayon. But there's also a type of art you can create called crayon resist, where you can draw with crayons on paper and then paint over it with watercolors or paint. And the parts that you drew on the crayon remain untouched by the paint. And that's called crayon resist because the waxy crayon resists or repels the water in the paint you use. Now, if the crayons that you're using are washable crayons, 
Well, they have a little something extra in them to make them not as resistant to water. You can still try using them, but you won't get the same results. So go ahead and keep creating a new creation, tell a joke, or some other secret hidden message. Hope you have fun. See you next time. Bye.